in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on, on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For there are two or three gathered together in my name. I am there in the midst of them. And so, again, we're, we're looking at this whole question of, of tribal law once more. And we, we think about something that is a, a dirty word today. It's called discipline. Did you hear what I said? Sorry, I was a bit, a bit worried about saying this word. You know? Discipline. It's about discipline. But the thing is, and this is the problem, this is the rub, that people don't like that word, discipline, because it has so many harsh connotations. But you know, when we talk about discipline in the Christian world, when we talk about discipline within the church world, and certainly within the body of Christ, which sometimes is different from the church world, sorry, um, but that is quite true. And sometimes we have got away from what discipline in the church really ought to be about. But it's part of this tribal law and this covenant agreement. It's part of the brotherhood of Christians and the sisterhood of Christians. It's about the community covenant. It's about covenanting, especially in the household of God, to do right to one another, to be right with one another, to not be bitter and twisted, to not be resentful, to not allow the anger, not to let the sun go down in your anger. It's about doing the right thing for God. And so therefore, what we talk about when we talk about discipline is we talk about a loving kindness and a, a way of living within the church that Christ has shown us. And so any kind of discipline, which I say is, is a word that people don't like, but any kind of confronting of any bad behaviour, any situations that go on in the church, is, is to be done through love. And the whole point of it is not for punishment's sake. Because that's what we see. We see discipline, we think of people being flogged or beaten. And we think of people being punished. And that's not what discipline in the church is about. It's about loving people to, to restore them. It's about reconciliation. And Jesus gives us the way to do it. And he says, if your brother sins against you, if your brother is caught in a sin against you in some way, he misses the mark, and he does something that offends you, that upsets you, that causes you problems, that maybe causes you some hardship or whatever, he says, go directly to your brother. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds, do not go and talk to your neighbours, don't tell your best friend, go to your brother and tell them directly. Speak to someone, you know, have, the, have the, the guts if you like, be brave enough, be bold enough to go to your brother. Because if you go in love, nevertheless you may be hurting, but if you go in love, if I come to you in love and I say, I don't want to feel like this anymore, but I have a problem at the moment, and I'd really like to sort this problem out with you. And this is my problem. And I love you in the Lord, and I would like to re restore the fellowship that I feel has been broken slightly here, and I'd like you to help me to do that. Would you mind helping me, because we need to sort something out. Now, if you go with that kind of attitude, someone's more likely to listen to what you have to say. And if you go and say, you actually upset me, you did this wrong and you did that wrong, they're obviously going to get very defensive. You know, whoa, slow down, Joe. What's going on here? Yeah? But if you speak to people in the right way, and if you say, I just don't, I'm feeling bad in myself, you know? and I have to go to the Eucharist, and I have to come before the altar of Christ, and it says in the scriptures that I should 
always make it right with my brother. Before I come and offer my gift, I should be right with my brother. So can you help me here? We, we, I, you know, it's something that I need to deal with. And it may be more my problem than it is yours, but would you please help me to deal with this problem? Now, if you go in love like that, you're likely to get a good reaction. If you go the other way, well, that's a joke. So, what happens then? Well then, he doesn't agree with you. Then, he says, no, I think you're wrong. Uh, and, I, and I resent the fact you came to me. And I don't like you. And I don't want to be involved with you. And to what, guess what? I don't want anything to do with you. In fact, if I see you in church, I'm going to sit the other side of the church. Or if I see you in church, I'm going to walk out. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Well, we see that person's not actually acting in the right way as a Christian. And so what do we do then? We then go to our neighbours and we go and, and, and shout it out from, from the rooftops and say, oh, he's bad, this person's bad, this woman's bad, she didn't take any notice of me. I did the right thing and look what's happened now. Pastor, you must help me. What do I, look at this, what, what's happened now? Well, you tell your best friend, best friend you whisper, oh, this person's done this and this person, I actually went to confront this person but they didn't take any notice of me. And you know, they're this, that, they're over. No? We're not supposed to do that. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to get two or three, take a couple of people with us, and then go back and say, I'm sorry, but we still haven't resolved this issue. And we can't allow it to continue in this way. And it's not a good situation. And at that point, you could take an elder of the church with you maybe a deacon or an elder in the church, a pastor or something, to go with you to try and talk it through, to try and help you both see where you're at fault, to help you both see where you need to make some adjustments, to help you both see what the Word says in your situation, to get witnesses together, to help you resolve it, not to go there and beat the person over the head, because you're taking some heavies with you. Because that's not the right attitude either. It's about restoring your relationship. It's about reconciliation. That's what God's all about. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. To reconcile us to God. And so that's what we need to be doing with this whole area of dispute within the body of Christ. And he says, <coughs> if that person then um, refuses to hear them, as well as you, then you need to then take it to the church. So then it needs to come before a meeting of the church. There needs to be a special meeting of the church, if it's so, such a grave offence, because it has to be something pretty heavy before we take it to the church, surely. I mean, if somebody's just said, a bad word to you, and you took offence. That's hardly something to take to the church. But if we've got some major sin going on within the church, if someone has really caused you difficulty and really caused you pain, then you know you might need to bring it before the church. If that person will not hear you, or will not hear you, if you take a couple of witnesses along and try to resolve it, and they're still determined that they are going to just. Um, take no notice of all that, and hurt you anyway. Then it says, if that person will not hear the church, because the church will then speak in authority under the ruling elders of the church, whatever that relationship is. And we have all sorts of denominations in our world communion, and some of them are Pentecostal, and some of them are Anglican, and some of them are Methodist, and URC, and all sorts of different churches, Baptists, Roman Catholic, all sorts of the old Catholic, we've got so many different denominations and they all have their own structure of ruling the church, of, of organising the church, of having people in leadership. And so whatever structure that is, there should be a meeting opportunity, a special meeting where you can deal with these kinds of things. And then he says, Jesus says, and if he won't hear you, then you must treat him like a heathen or a tax collector. And we automatically think, well, good. I can 
really giving her a hard time. Her a hard time now. <laughs>